So this is the cover of today's Evening Standard magazine. Um, who's this girl, this pretty girl on the cover, I hear you ask? It's, it's not me. <laughs> it's not going to anything like me, but she is Punjabi as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's no small thing that there's a Punjabi girl on, not only on the front cover of Evening Standard magazine, but this, this particular model, her name is Neelam Gill. Um, for those of you who are not in the fashion world, um, she has been cast as the first British Indian um, face of Burberry this year. Um, now, obviously, when I saw this, I, I'd already I'd already kind of found her Instagram, so I was aware of who this girl was. But I kind of got excited to see her on the front cover of the magazine, and I wanted to see, you know, what they had to say about her story. Because obviously you cannot put an Indian girl on the front cover of a big magazine like this in England and cast her as the face of um, of a luxury fashion brand like Burberry without talking about diversity um, and and drawing attention to her race. Because you know, other than other than this, uh, other than Neela, I can count on the fingers of one hand how many um, Indian models or models of Indian descent are actually um, well known on the international fashion scene. Um, you know, for anybody who's not in fashion, Lakshmi Menon, Ujwala Rauth, who was actually like before my generation. Lakshmi Menon is my generation. Now, um, Neelam Gill is sort of the, the new generation. She's only 20 years old. Um, that that's about all I can think of, actually. Uh, they, I mean, there's a couple of names that I know of personally who are doing quite well, but not household names. So, and when you compare that to, you know, the number of white models that are, you know, dominating the international catwalks, you know, I always take as a gauge of how how well models are doing by the top fifty fashion models um, in the world. And a few years ago, I remember I had a look at the list and. In, in the top 50, there were a couple of black girls, um, a couple of Chinese or Japanese sort of Far Eastern, Far East Asian girls, and one South Asian girl, um, Lakshmi. And, you know, everybody, to, I think, you know, this is something that I want, wanted to talk about for a while. I've been thinking about it a lot while I was in Bali. Um, by the way, I'm sure you, sure you can can notice by my uh, setting that I'm back in London now. Probably should have mentioned that before. Um, but yeah, while I was in Bali, I was thinking about this a lot, about sort of diversity in the uh, fashion and advertising industry. And I think this is something that, um, that you know, I, I've struggled to talk about in the past because it is actually very painful for me. And I think a lot of models of colour don't like talking about this because firstly we don't want to bite the hand that feeds us secondly I'm very uncomfortable with playing the race card I know people don't like it but I've been in this industry for 10 years now and you know like Neelam has a platform she's now been cast as the face of Burberry so she has a platform where she feels quite comfortable to talk about these things and um you know while I was reading this article and she did she did talk about diversity in the in the industry um, they also mentioned that she had a YouTube channel so I went and had a look um, I'll put a link to it here go and check out her YouTube channel because seriously this girl is 20 years old and she has wisdom beyond her years this girl has it figured out um, and yeah she's uh, very very bravely come out and talked about racism in the fashion industry um, now, when I use the word racism, I want to make a distinction between personal racism, which is basically like, I hate you, you packy, um, and systemic racism, which is basically, um, yeah, we're not really looking for a black girl or an Indian girl as the face of this brand because we want to appeal to a white demographic, um, which is not actually, a lot of people would say is not racism, but it when every single brand is doing that and models of color aren't getting hired or aren't even getting castings um, as much as their white counterparts and consequently not getting enough work, not being able to pay their rent and things like that, that's systemic racism. And it's not just something that's seen in you know the, the, the fashion and advertising industry. The fashion and advertising industry is just a reflection of society. It perpetuates the problems that we see in our society um, but it is also just a reflection of what we see in society um, 
the reason why a lot of the you know we have to ask ourselves why do these brands mainly just want to hire white models um and appeal to white people and then you see it that the fashion and advertising industry does not exist in a bubble it um you know it's basically it's because they are trying to appeal to the demographic that they think has the most power and influence so then we get into um you know we start seeing that there is actually uh this structure of um white power and white domination that manifests itself in the fashion and advertising industry as a white beauty standard and a eurocentric beauty standard and i don't i don't think anybody can deny this that there there is this problem of diversity i mean people can say oh well it it's england you know we live in a this is a white majority country so of course they're going to want to appeal to to um a white demographic because that's the majority um like i could also present the argument that like proportionally when you look at how many uh how, what percentage of the population is black or asian is not actually being represented not only in on the boards of the major um, model agencies in england but also in the magazines and campaigns and things like that um it the, it it doesn't correlate with the actual percentage but also um i would ask people to like i've you know i've traveled all over the world for modeling and you know unlike neelam who ha has actually found success in england i actually had to travel to asia before i achieved any success as a model i worked fucking hard as a model here in london but there was a massive problem with diversity here my first agency that signed me um said to me wh wh i went in to see them and they said we really like you know we love your look you're beautiful um we're just going to have a meeting though and we'll let you know what we decide and then my booker at the time came out into the meeting room and he said okay we've had a chat we like you but um we're just not sure how much work there is going to be for an asian model in britain asian means sort of south asian like pakistani indian bangladeshi because we don't think that there there's going to be that much market for you um so we're just going to take you on on a trial basis and see how well you do now at the time i had very short hair and probably because of my own feelings of racial inferiority um i didn't i didn't look so indian i probably looked a lot more ambiguous and i was told by a lot of people that i looked very racially ambiguous and this was kind of said as it, as it presented as a good thing like oh you know you almost look brazilian like i could i would never guess that you were asian and i thought this was a compliment because of this you know this standard of eurocentric beauty that if somebody tells me that i look punjabi or i look indian or pakistani that is an insult and i have actually even had friends say to me oh yeah you look really asian sorry no offense you know this is these are the this is the kind of systemic racism that i'm talking about um anyway back to my point i'm jumping around a lot because there's there's a lot that i want to say about this and i've been thinking about it for the last few months um you know when people say oh it's a white majority country so of course there's going to be less diversity um i've traveled all over the world and you know i i've modeled in thailand which is a thai majority country but yet white models are still the standard there now i've worked in india where you know yes indian models are used much much more and indian models are quite standard and we get a lot more work there and that's where i work the best um but white models are also still quite standard white models are not othered and if you are um this is another thing that i've noticed if you're modeling in a country like thailand or southeast asia anywhere in southeast asia or india if you are mixed like for example in india if you're white and indian you're still indian you're indian enough for them uh similarly like the the models that they love for commercial bookings in india and thailand i can't speak for the other countries because i haven't traveled there but that's another thing that's a problem i haven't traveled to countries like korea or china because i know as an indian model i will not get work there um the models that they like commercially in thailand and india the best are models who are half white and half indian so again like white is never treated like an ethnic minority it's treated as the standard of beauty and everything else is other so in india for example a chinese model probably wouldn't get much work neither would a black model so 
you have to be white or Indian. In Thailand, you have to be Thai or white. I got work in Thailand mainly because the best photographer in Thailand took a chance on me um, and put me on the cover of Vogue Thailand. And for him, I'm massively grateful because he completely changed a lot of things for me and helped me gain a lot of confidence in myself. Um, just like uh, Neelam talks about Christopher Bailey taking a chance on her and then suddenly she had credibility as a model. And not only just credibility for herself, but she has now paved the way for many, many other, not just models, but women of South Asian descent to actually feel good about themselves and to stop trying to fit into this Eurocentric standard of beauty. Um, Okay, I could talk about this like for hours, but I think I will probably leave it there and just see what what you guys have to say about it. Leave me some comments and I will um, maybe record a part two to this because there's so much on this topic that I think needs to be talked about. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that she's spoken up about this because I, I, was, I was afraid to. And I knew I had to do it and I was going to do it and I was gonna do it around another topic. Um, I'll put a link to that particular topic here where um, this guy talks about um, district nightclub t turning away some girls because they were black and you know I could talk about that for a long time but he also mentions the problems that he has faced as an actor going for castings and auditions the fact that in in the entertainment industry we always have to be aware of our race and we're always you know like when my agency took a chance on me because of my ethnicity that meant that I I knew my place and if ever I thought they were treating me badly or not sending me for as many castings as they were sending the other girls for I didn't complain about it that much because I felt like I'm so indebted to them for taking a chance on me because as an Indian model I know that I'm not going to get that much work and another agency might not sign me so th this is the problem of systemic racism that I'm talking about makes people feel like shit and as this other guy talked about, you know, slowly kills you from the inside. Um, anyway, leave me your comments. Uh, what do you all think? Um, and yeah, let's start a discussion. And thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.